Hello and welcome to this lecture in the IBM Cloud Foundation Skills Series. In this lecture we're going to continue looking at the services that are provided on the IBM Cloud. Again, I'm not going to go into minute detail of each service, I'm merely going to try and give you a bit of a feel for what each service is in a 30 second or so summary. Of course, I'm breaking this down into several videos uh, and dealing with a few sections of the IBM Cloud in each. So in this video, um, we're going to concentrate on the analytics, databases and developer tool services that are available. Beginning with analytics then. The analytics engine service lets you develop and deploy analytics applications using Apache Spark and Apache Hadoop. And with this service, you're basically spinning up a powerful virtual server environment to do just that. Next, we have DB2 Warehouse, and this is a fully managed cloud-based data warehouse service that is based on IBM's DB2 database. You'll see this in the database part of the catalog as well. Geospatial Analytics is a really cool tool that can track in real time when, service, when devices enter, leave, or hang around a defined geographic space. IBM Cognos Dashboard Embedded is a way to visualise or add visualisation capabilities to an application and it lets users create their own visualisations through simple drag and drop screens so they can see charts and uh, stuff like that on their, on their data and there's really some cool things that you can do in there as well. Master Data Management, so if you have a, uh, data that is coming from different silos or you need data to come together to create a single record of truth then this is a service that for you. Um, it deploys the MDM service into a dedicated virtual environment for you to use along with the software you need. It's basically a cloud implementation of Infosphere MDM. SQL Query, now again you'll see this uh, in the database section again, but it's, uh, it's a really, really cool tool that lets you um, um, query data that's stored in files in object storage using SQL without actually putting it into databases. So it's kind of like a database-less SQL querying, um, which is really great. Streaming Analytics, so this is um, powered by IBM Streams and it basically takes data in real time and analyzes it on the fly. So you can analyze up to millions of events a second and that allows you to uh, well, let your applications make split second decisions based on that analysis. So it's a powerful and very fast service. Uh, and then we have the Weather Company data. So the Weather Company is an IBM company and uh, through, a company, uh, or through a series of APIs you can add weather data to your applications. So you can either be, um, you can, that can either be historical weather current weather or forecast weather uh, and this is really powerful because it means you can build applications that take weather into account so for example you can use it to predict buying trends and perhaps uh, buy stock or create offers based on that or if you're responsible for maintenance planning for remote electricity networks then maybe weather data can help you plan where to deploy resources better for when bad weather is forecast so uh, next we have databases and I'm going to split these into different types of database um, so first of all we have uh, relational databases or SQL databases. So, um, so these are the ones which um, are based on tables and uh, they relate to one another through foreign keys and so on. So we have DB2 which is a cloud based instance of IBM's popular DB2 database. Uh, then we have DB2 hosted. Now the difference between these two services is that the DB2 hosted is dedicated to you. It's provisioned on a dedicated server and you have far more administrator process or you have far more administrative access, I should say, to the instance as opposed to the regular DB2 service, which is part of a shared installation. So if you need more powerful, dedicated resources for your workload, you should probably look at DB2 hosted. Next, we have the DB2 warehouse, and as I mentioned, when it popped up in the analytics part of the catalog, this is an instance of DB2 specifically for data warehousing. We then have Infomix, and this brings you um, a few of the features of NoSQL databases as well. Um, or you can do analytics rather than uh, more traditional OLT transactional stuff uh, on there as well. Uh, we have Compose uh, for MySQL, so this is basically a MySQL database in the cloud. And there's two PostgreSQL offerings, uh, Compose and Databases. Databases for PostgreSQL is uh, actually a newer offering, and I believe it offers uh, better scaling and automated management. And lastly here we have the SQL service, uh, which was, as I said enables you to run SQL queries against certain file types stored in object storage without actually creating a database. So moving on we have NoSQL databases, or NoSQL databases, and these are, just, uh, these are also sometimes called document stores, as they store data in documents which are uh, typically in JSON format. So the advantage with that is that there's no hard and fast data structure for developers to worry about, um, but these are also really fast and powerful databases. So here our offerings are a, a Cloudant, uh, which is very similar to MongoDB, if you're familiar with that. And then we have Compose for MongoDB, uh, and lastly we have Compo Compose for RethinkDB. Okay, so next up we have uh, 
key value stores and these are good for applications which need to quickly store or cache data. These tend to be in memory database which means they are blindingly fast uh, because they don't have to read or write anything from disk. So um, here we have um, Compose for ECD, uh, Compose for Redis and uh, Database for Redis as well. So we have a few other databases which I've put into a bit of another's category. So first we have Blockchain. Now um, this could actually be a, a course or a series on its own. So blockchain is effectively a ledger of transactions which is shared amongst particip participants. So when a transaction is written, it cannot be removed or altered in any way. And the, the effect of that this is that um, there's assurance through the chain of the transactions um, that they've actually taken place. And there's also effectively been no dodgy dealings. Or if they have, they're, they're, they're kind of there for everyone to see. So blockchain is another hot topic in the IT world at the moment. IBM's a leader in the technology and it's all and it's doing all sorts of things from uh, making sure financial tra transactions are secure through to ensuring that food supply chains are transparent and enhancing food safety. Uh, next up we have um, Compose for Enterprise. Um, and basically if you want to run one of these Compose services in a dedicated environment then you can do it with this Compose Enterprise service. Uh, next we have Compose for Elasticache. Uh, and this combines full text searching with the indexing strength of a JSON um, document database or NoSQL database. And it's essentially for rich data analytics and rich data and an analytics. <laughs> can't get my teeth around this. So it's for rich data analysis on large volumes of data. Composed for Janus Graph is a graph database. So this is optimized for storing and querying high in highly interconnected data uh, modeled with vertices and edges. And this basically allows you to do queries that would not be possible with traditional RDBMS databases. Compose for RabbitMQ is a service that handles messages between applications and databases, so it's effectively a messaging service. And lastly we have Compose for, um, I think this is pronounced Sk Skylar DB, and this is a wide column distributed database. Okay, so moving on to developer tools. Um, we have the Activity Tracker, which is a means of auditing actions that have taken place in your IBM Cloud account. Alert notification can be used to set up alerts against applications that then notify people about them. So for example, if your application goes down, alert notification can detect this and tell someone about it. We have auto scaling, and this is a great tool for scaling automatically your application based on rules that you define. Availability monitoring helps DevOps teams to ensure that their apps are available and meeting performance expectations. Continuous delivery is used to automate builds, unit tests, deployments, and so on. So when you push new code to an application, continuous delivery can carry out these tasks automatically, which saves time and creates consistency in the, uh, in the release process. DevOps Insights is a tool that lets you um, view test results and trend information about your builds and deployments. So it basically helps you make sure that your, uh, you know, your, your quality code is delivered through to production. Event management is a tool to help your DevOps team to analyze different sources and events in logs so you can uh, uh, so they can then identify actual instance from them and, uh, and then automate resolutions. Globalization pipeline can be really useful where you have a global application and it's translation management service and it's a translation management service so you can uh, rapidly translate and release cloud and mobile apps around the world. Log analysis is a tool for analyzing logs that come out of your applications and creating dashboards and graphs based on that log information for analytics. The monitoring services gives you quick insight as to how your apps are performing and consuming resources. Toolchains are sets of integrated tools for development, uh, deployment, monitoring and so on. So you can create a, a chain of tools which um, help automate all of this stuff. So again you get quality and consistency in your application releases. And finally we have the workload scheduler and uh, this is a tool that lets you um, schedule different workloads or tasks um, which basically helps you integrate your applications. Okay, so again, we've uh, we've gone through a lot uh, of services in this video. So well done once more for sticking with it. And if you're ready, feel free to move on to the next video.